you have been a strict vegan before and then you've switched and gone back to sort of a full omnivore state. So why go back to being vegan? So I was vegan for five years and when I went back to being an omnivore, I think I realised that I wasn't that thrilled about my lifestyle. It was easier, it was much easier to get protein. Which lifestyle weren't you thrilled about? About my non-vegan lifestyle. Right. But when I thought about it, my, my issue is none of the things I was eating, I would be happy to either kill myself or work or see a place well, where luckily, they were being killed. we don't killed. have to kill the animals I ourselves. I know, but I think there's a dishonesty in that. I think, you know, we, re we rely on a system that's really very unpleasant and causes a lot of animal and climate suffering. And we outsource that to people we can't see, who are usually low paid, um, working in, in really often quite horrific conditions. And I think that if you have to take responsibility for the way you live, you know, and there are lots of issues around vegans, around affordability and accessibility. But if, you know, like us sitting at this table, you have the luxury of actually having a choice over your diet and taking responsibility for your actions. Well, hold, okay. hold on, hold on. Let's bring, let's, bring, let's bring in Lily. So, look, I'm a humanitarian. I eat everything apart from humans. Oh, I would dispute that. that. <laughs> I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't even rule that, that out, frankly, I some that. of the guests we get on here. But um, let's just be serious about this. I mean, my, my argument about veganuary is that every month now has to be something, right? We're all getting terrorised into, you've got to be dry in January, you've got to be vegan. If people want to do this, get on with it quietly, do whatever you want to do. It's the tyranny that comes with it. I think you raise a really important point, and I think at the moment, vegan, being vegan is actually becoming a bit faddy. I think if you look at the nutrition survey, 65% of the population are still not even hitting their five a day. Mm. So you've got the majority of people not hitting their five a day. And then to go from that point to literally eating all plant-based is pretty radical. Well, it's what, it sounds like some people might get somewhere in between them, which would be which a good thing. I think it's it? a good thing. It's small steps. It's someone is saying, let me have one or two more fruit and vegetables today. Or maybe let me have one or two vegetarian or vegan meals. That's much more realistic here's the, here's, the majority here's my of issue, people. Though. Police in Wales, right, uh, posted a picture of themselves eating a cooked breakfast, right? Rather like what we got on the table here. We got it there? So this is the, the police in Wales, right? Just tucking into a nice breakfast, right? This was a response from somebody called Diana on Twitter. Speaking as a taxpayer, I prefer them to be less selective when answering questions and perhaps not post breakfast pics that offend vegetarian <laughs> vegan followers. Pretty thoughtless, given the job title they have. No, I'm sorry. But Piers, with all due respect, that's a terrible argument against veganism. You know, there are... There are <laughs> no, it's there a terrible are, argument she put uh, in! There are repressed, there are kind of tyrannical and unreasonable people in every movement, right? I mean, you're doing veganuary, aren't you? No one made you. By default, no I can't eat anything. But I think... All I can eat is and, bananas. And you're not piping down about it. You're not getting <laughs> you on with it quietly. You said it was fatty. <laughs> you know, when I was, when I was vegan, I was a barrister at the time. I was travelling all over the country doing trials. It was impossible in so many places in this country <laughs> to get vegan food. So anything that why widens access and gives people more no, choice. Yeah, I think but it's what really happens? Good. What happens is there's an assumption that if you go vegan or become vegan, you're naturally or automatically healthier, and that's not necessarily the case. To be a vegan, you have to make sure that you're on top of your game to get the I range agree. of foods, mm. to get the variety of foods, so that you're not eating an unbalanced diet. Afu, I know you're doing this partly because of animal welfare, but you did make the argument that if you're not prepared to kill the animals yourself, you shouldn't be eating them. But presumably, you're not going out and collecting your own nuts and seeds and plants, are you? No, and so... And I think who's killing those plants? I, I think, you? Seriously? I, plant, okay. Who's killing all those plants? Well, who's collecting them? Because you make the point Someone's about Someone's ripping them out of the ground and, and killing I agree. them. So, I, I think it's really important There's to say... There's mass murder of being plants being going on. Well, quite apart you. from the no, mass murder of... It's about the collecting and the labour, and so if you're going to make that point, you, you're I think also being going vegan, to be hypocritical being unless you're not going to collect Being vegan does not give you a moral high ground of a cruelty-free life. That's really important. So that's one reason I'm I repelled by vegans who claim to be on this hugely moral high ground mm -hmm. because as long as you live in the modern world, shop in supermarkets, buy mass-produced clothes and consume fossil fuels, yeah. you're complicit in a system that's causing a lot of damage. So mm. I completely accept that. But once you start thinking about what you eat, and veganism is not just a diet, by the way, you know, it's about the clothes you wear, um, the, 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 the metals that you, and gems, when how they've been mined. No leather? Um, no leather. The clothes that I'm wearing are ethically made by small business. This is made by um, an but African I... business. This is made by a small collective. You start thinking about everything mm. that you put on your but body I that you wear. Think and that's that really important. In terms of the ethical um, argument, we've also got to think about the bigger picture. Trends like gluten-free, going vegan, yeah. have an implication on food security worldwide. So 
If we're going to be eating more grains, more beans and pulses, that means countries like India that produce your grains, beans and pulses are going to have to export them over here, well, which means it's going to affect food supply. Okay, in countries like a really India. Just, important just, point about that because one, t one pound of grain, yeah. uh, so for one pound of meat, requires 15 pounds of grain. Meat is a very inefficient way to consume. But hold on, you can eat, you can eat that one It's so not just meat well. that has a big carbon footprint. It's also other foods as well. So, for example, I'll go back to trends. Avocado on toast. We all love avocado on toast. As a result, forests in Mexico are getting chopped down to plant avocados so that they can be flown over here. But okay, so, so what we could all all consequences what do we could... of all our eating choices, uh, Linear Afwa, thanks very you much. You like murdering indeed. plants and trees. I like... I never knew I like moderation. It was moderation game. You like eating meat because... It's the best animals in the jungle eat meat. Lions mm. eat meat. I don't Tigers eat meat. Eat meat. I like a bit of Leopards fish. Leopards eat meat. We need to eat meat. I like the way you're equating yourself with the king of the jungle. <laughs> you too. do like that. <laughs> subtle, <laughs> subtle, isn't it?